this is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to show you where the crank connection rod cap oil pad felt is. I've never seen one of these before. And uh, after I found uh, oil pads in the presser bar and the needle bar, I started looking real close at the uh, parts list and when I'd see these little things that were small and not smooth and didn't have a screw cap and stuff I investigate and sure enough uh, I found more oil pads so since I've already taken off the feed regulator and the motor and things like that I thought this would be a good time to go in and take a look at this um, if you if you saw the slide in the beginning of this I showed a crank connection rod with a cap and where this uh, oil hole is and uh, it, it shows to, to oil that hole you go in through the top of the machine up here you you rotate this so that the crank gets up at the top and you align the oil hole in the cap up here with the oil hole in the body and then you can put a couple drops of oil in there and uh, I've done a number of machines and I've never seen an oil pad in there but in this one um, it's very hard to see in there but I thought I could see one and I poked it with a needle it was pretty stiff pretty hard and I dropped some oil in there and it took it a long time to go anywhere <laughs> so um, I swabbed that out with uh, with uh, q-tips you know to, to get most of the oil that I would put in out and when I was doing the other work on this machine I would just drop a drop or two of alcohol in that oil port and sure enough it seems to have softened up but I want to take it out and look at it and since I have some felt cords and stuff I thought well I'll just I'll just replace it but on the scale of the parts manual it's going to be a little tiny a, a little stubby thing but let's take a look here I'm going to light this up here a little bit for you so that you can see some of the parts here and then I'm going to show you some close-up pictures also as we go so you can get a better a, a better look at it here so the idea here in the adjusters manual how you take these uh, cap screws off is you you rotate the crank until one or other of the screws is lined up with this oil hole up here put the screwdriver down in there and, and loosen the screw so that's what I'm, I'm gonna do uh, it's still it's still a little awkward and it's still kind of a tight uh, fit in there so I took a picture some pictures uh, through this hole and lighting up the side here to have light to show this rear screw towards the back of the machine and a matching screw on the front of the machine in relation to the top of the oil port. So let me show you those slides real quick. Okay, so that'll, that'll give you an idea, even if you can't see it that well, of what I'm going to be trying to do here. Um, when I was kind of testing this out a little bit, since I have this cover plate off the back side here, if I put a light near it, when I looked in the hole, I could kind of see a little bit where to go and where to line up the screwdriver. Let me, let me drag this over here a little bit closer. <clears throat> Turn it a little, maybe. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think you can see where that, hmm, down here maybe, 
Maybe you can see where that screwdriver is. So I'm going to loosen these. Now, I, if these fall down in the machine, I think we can get them out the bottom. But once I get them very loose, I'm going to try and stick my little uh, uh, screw holding springy screwdrivers down down in there these guys and I'm sorry if these uh, shots aren't real clear it's just you know there's no arm cover on a machine like this to take off and give you a clear view you know what I'm gonna put another machine over here on my bench for a minute I've got a 404 let me grab it and we'll do an overhead shot and I'll give you a better view of this stuff I'm talking about. Okay, let's see if we can do this here. This is a cover on the 404. See how these <laughs> newer machines, how easy it is. And here is the cap on that rod. And I got the screws loose in here, so I'm going to just pull it off. I thought I loosened the screws. There we go. Pull it off and we'll look at it here. So there's the oil port on this. is the big hole all the way through. And here's the part of the, the uh, crank on the arm shaft. And if I tilt this up a little bit here, you can see the cap base that goes down and becomes the rod. Okay, you see that moving there a little bit. Okay, so now let's go back to this. Uh... Okay, so what what you were seeing in that 404 is is the, the same kind of a connection rod that's in this model 1591 mm -hmm. and this is the part I want to take out because from what I can tell the parts manual and peeking in that hole there's a felt pad in the hole on the model 15 but this is just a, a cap that allows to to go over the crankshaft the, the main arm shaft up here at the crank and screw into the cap base and the rod and then it has an oil port or an oil point because you've got this metal on metal you know that you want to keep oiled in here okay and I've noticed like on the 404s uh, you know after you put like two or three drops of oil here it kind of starts leaking out the side a little bit so I like the idea of an oil pad that would allow oil into these parts uh, but not just flood them with oil and, and part of it leak out. Okay, so let me put that aside someplace and try not to lose it. And let's get back to this guy. And I, I was going to see if I could get my uh, spring screwdriver in there. Right? And get it in that screw and push it down to lock it on the springs now you won't have as much trouble here as I am because you're not working behind a camera I'm assuming and uh, oops, come on you there you go I think I've got it here. Oh, it came loose. Darn. I'm not that good with my left hand on a screwdriver. <laughs> Let me try one more time here. It would probably go quicker if I just uh, didn't film this part, but I want you to see what it's like to actually do it. Because believe me, I'm probably clumsier than you are, you know if you go to do this okay let's try this again here 
might be at a little bit of an angle too there we go might help to to line it up better with the port above I'm hesitant to pull all right come up. there we go hey who just barely gets out of there all right so now that is the cap screw that's one of them now let's see if we can get the other one I'm going to uh, when you when, from the back side you can't see it as good from where the feed regulator um, plates are and stuff so you gotta really it helps to put a light in here and then peek in the top and kind of see what you're doing I guess let me show you instead of just telling you let me turn it around here to the front of the machine and try and show you that uh, you can't you can't really see you can't really see it it's 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 up here you know and you, and you don't see the you don't see it as well and I noticed that uh, or did you notice that this screw on the back side was a little damaged the slot is a little damaged and the problem is like I can't get my Chapman screwdrivers down through that hole right because the the bit holders too big so I'm just using a regular tapered screwdriver a little bit easier here well I don't think you need to see me take the second one out so let me get it out of there and then we'll continue okay this was interesting let me, <laughs> let me tell you about this here so by putting a light here and going through the top port with my screwdriver I was able to loosen the screw and everything but I just couldn't grab it very well with the spring screwdriver so I just loosened it all the way until it was just wobbly and sitting in the hole and then I grabbed my my little magnet stick and pulled it out okay and and what happens when those two uh, cap screws are taken out is that the um, the connect rod falls down see it see it just fell down here and it doesn't turn because it's not connected to the cap so it's down under the machine just resting here Let me, see I can pull it up and move it see that okay so that's that's normal when it's not connected to the cap so actually I'm just going to push it back and out of the way and here is my cap upside down stuck <laughs> on the on the crank of the arm shaft so let me see if I can just go in there and grab oh good it just fell right off all right so here is the cap uh, crank connect rod cap of the Singer Model 15 uh, 1591 and you see you can't see through the hole there because that pad is in there and look at the hole through the cap it's a lot smaller where's, where's that other it's a lot smaller than the uh, hole than the cap on the 404 so here was the 404 and you see the the big hole right through the oil port there right and then here is this cap on the model 15 91 and you see that the little hole for the oil to drip through is a lot smaller and look how beefy this thing is Here's the 404 and look at look at this it's a lot uh, wider uh, smaller it's not as long but it's it's pretty 
pretty beefy. So now let's get this down here and uh, don't get my screws mixed up here. <laughs> Because I want to take a look at this. Let's get the 404 out of here and see that see that oil felt. Um, let me just grab a needle and see if I can push that up and get some light here. Push that oil felt out of there. There it is. See, it's just looks like a little pencil eraser or something. It's still pretty hard, but it. it let me let me put this uh, needle in it like I did from the top. I can even tell what the top is here. Yeah, it's it's it has quite a bit of dried stuff in there, so I'm just going to replace it. But that's that's what it looks like, and it is it's it's hard. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. So uh, let me grab some one eighth here and take a look and. We'll kind of make sure that it's the right size. Mm -hmm. Just barely, barely loose. One eighth, but a two eighth, which would be four sixteenths. I guess if I had some three sixteenths, if they make it, that I think I could force that in. Okay, so instead of the one eighth. I'm going to, this is 3 sixteenths. That's what I'm going to use. But look what a stubby little, stubby little piece. <laughs> and it even, it even has a, like a little nipple from being pressed in uh, from the top and into that hole. So I don't know how do you even measure, how do you even not real scientific here, but I'm going to cut a piece and uh, try and stick it in there. All right. Try and get a nice level, even cut on it. So it goes bouncing away. And I'm not going to pre-oil it here I think I just want to see if I can get it started down in there with the oil pads and these things you, you always want them to be lower like than the metal so that there's a space for the drop or two of oil you know to go in there and uh, sit for a moment before it sinks in so you don't want it flush with the metal or definitely not sticking out of the top. This is just a little wood barbecue stick. That's a good fit, 3 16 That's really, that's, I don't know what, that's, that's probably 3 16 of an inch long or maybe even an eighth. All right, so the other thing that while well, I was doing this that I wanted to say was if I took it off again in the future, although this one I'll never have to, I would have taken the rear screw or the, or the screw towards the front of the machine because this is the back, I would have taken the screw towards the front of the machine out first because it was a little harder. You can't see it as well and it's harder to to get in there. So with the, with that more difficult one then when you took this one which in my opinion is much easier 
uh, the whole thing will come apart easier. So for putting this back in, um, one other thing that I wanted to mention, and that's on both of these um, caps. Let me clear some of this stuff away. Now what I wanted to show you, when you put this back on, uh, on the cap and on the base, up here, the cap base, there's uh, on the on my machine the the screw hole towards the rear here has a smooth rounded off edge and the base is smooth and rounded but on the front side screw there is a ridge there there's a protrusion here that sticks out there's a ridge and you want to match ridge to ridge and smooth to smooth when you put it back on. So in this case, both my smooth edges are going to be towards the back of the machine. If you put it on backwards, I know the screw holes would line up. But I think you would be binding. There would be some binding. And, and it might drive you nuts to see what, what the heck is binding in here, you know. So, that's my, that's my plan. So you see how those two were lined up, the two raised parts. Okay. Now, if we, if we put the, there we go. If we turn it so the crank of the arm shaft is down at the bottom. See how now it's lined up and the rod is fit to it. Okay, then we're going to want to insert the cap right on top of that. And, oh, 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 don't fall down in there. I got to figure out some, some better way to hold that. <laughs> Almost lost it there. See, where's my round side? Yeah, maybe I can just stick that on with my finger because it was kind of stuck to the arm shaft before. So maybe if I line it up just right, it'll, it'll get in there good. Okay, see it there? All right. So the, the crank rod is going to have to be, connection rod is going to have to be pulled up by the screw. I can see that already. So, let's see if I can uh, get one of the screws. And uh, I guess I'll put the damaged one back where it was. See if I can get it in there and get it started. with like this oops gotta have the light for you guys get it in there and get it started with my spring my screw holding screwdriver aye, aye, aye. that's funny if I line up the screw hole with the oil hole there we go and I got to push down. Now the, the cap and the cap base are kind of coming together. But I lost it. So at least it went in there pretty good. Let's see if I can come through the top now and get a screwdriver bit in there and just gently turn it trying to get those threads. Oh, it wants to roll away from me. <laughs> back to this side yeah I have to have it back there sorry it's way in there but that's where I have to go to line up my screwdriver with it see and now there it is now it's catching the threads are catching into the cap base and I'm gonna tighten it up but not a hundred percent let me tighten it till it stops turning 
and then I'm going to back it off about a turn so that I can have some room to wiggle. Yeah, see, it's really dry and catching here because it's not screwed down. So that I can have some room to wiggle that back screw in there. Let me set up for that. All right, I got the back screw in, and let me give you some tips about this. Where I had said earlier, I would uh, probably remove the screw on the front side of the machine first, and then this back one. Um, I, I think that was a good plan, but putting the back one in first when you go to reassembly, and then the front side one second, it's a good plan because you 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 see how high this is raised up now how high the rod has raised up to get that uh, front screw lined up with the oil, oil port you could almost drop the screw down in the hole and then tighten it that's how close it gets to the top okay versus to line this one up it has to be way down on the bottom like this so it's in there you know two and a half inches to uh, to line the screwdriver up with the back side it's only about a half inch maybe three quarters to line the back screw up and then what I had done was I put this screw in and uh, tightened it till it stopped, then backed it off a turn. But when I first put the front side screw in, I tightened it all the way. Then I came back to the back screw and tightened it. And then when I tried it, it was binding real bad. So I said, uh-oh. <laughs> so I had to go in and loosen the front screw, loosen both screws really. And I had to wiggle the cap around a little bit to get it seated properly. And then I retightened this just till it barely stopped, you know, just till it snugged up. And then the front side till it snugged. Then I came back and tightened this one and then tightened the front one. And now it's, now it's not binding at all. Okay, and it, and it, mo it moves real smooth. And I, I haven't even oiled it yet which I'm going to do now in case you uh, haven't done this before or seen it done I'm just going to take some of my triflow oil and I'm going to put the little tube into the nozzle so that I can actually get it down in there and I'm just going to bend the tube get it down in there now I'm going to straighten the bottle up and I'm going to watch some oil go through that tube and I'm filling up the space above that oil felt that I put in there and it's in it now you can't see it but I can it's sitting right on top of that <laughs> so maybe I should have <laughs> maybe I should have uh, uh, pre-soaked that felt with oil before I stuck it in there see if I can just puncture it a little bit with my needle just to break the surface tension on it I'll take another look at yeah the oils already sinking in okay oh yeah I can tell it's even a little bit more smoother now so now, here's another thought for you. I mean, you may not want to do this at all. And your oil pad may be soft or it may be missing. And if it's missing, um, you, I would be tempted to, to raise that up like they say in the instruction manual until that oil port is right below uh, the oil oil opening on the top of the machine and stuff a felt down in there 
and if you if you didn't want to spend um, you know five five dollars for five feet of three sixteenths firm felt cord from McMaster car plus seven or eight dollars shipping to cut a eighth of an inch <laughs> you know uh, you may find some other firm felt and just cut a small piece and push it in there if you don't have any oil pad in there at all I definitely would put some kind of a dense felt in there um, especially if you have an old vintage spool pin felt I, I would you know maybe take a hole punch and punch a couple pieces out and I think you could stuff it right down through the top into there without taking any of this apart like I did. I wanted to show you how to take it apart um, you know so that you can see and somebody had done it before when, because I told you this screw was damaged so that's a clear sign somebody got in there before and I don't know if they replaced the felt once before uh, you know years ago or or what but I'm going to show you again the other side of the cap towards the front of the machine that has the ridge that raised area between the base the cap base and the cap to remind you when you put it back together if you take it apart that you want those two ridged parts to be on the same side of the connecting rod okay or else you're definitely going to have binding and they they make quite a point of that in the adjusters manual they make quite a big point about about that uh, you know reinstallation so here's that picture okay yeah that's, that's I'll probably put one or two more drops of oil in there just because that felt was brand new and dry and it's swollen up a little I can tell a tiny bit but it's still way well below the top of the oil port so I'll put in the description below the video a link to the firm felt cord page of McMaster car if you want to go take a look at it maybe if you're in a sewing group or something that you know you guys want to split the cost on it or something like that but that's the crank connecting rod cap oil pad felt is how it's described okay you may have never seen that before <laughs> I, I hope that was something new for you <laughs> and I'm sorry I couldn't really get better photo uh, you know better shots of it uh, to kind of show you but I'm hoping some of those close-up pictures and my explanation will help you understand that uh, and see what's going on in there mm. yeah that's good very, very nice I haven't even oiled in, you know much of anything else on here but that's nice okay so I think next I'm going to do the hand wheel assembly take the retainer ring and the Textilite gear off of it and there's a spring in there and I haven't done that in a long time and I don't I've never done it on a video so I'll show you how that uh, sh that sp spring works back there and explain why it's there and stuff so you might want to come back and see me someday in the future and check that out in the meantime thanks so much for tuning in this time and please take care of yourself